and hit steel CAA saying that, that is what I use 24.1 grains of bargain for my 69s. And um, like I said, I one of my mentors is that James Phillips, and that's exactly what he uses is 24.0. And I happen to see that quite a bit on snipers hide in their loading depot. Um, it seems like they it seems like a pretty popular load and I mentioned to him in regard to you know that 24.0 being on the low spectrum of the velocity and he says he's not concerned about the velocity he's concerned about the accuracy so and that's there's a lot of truth of that just because you got a hot load doesn't make it an accurate uh, load so To the point, formative, entertaining, and protecting the Second Amendment. Welcome back to Elster's Rifles and Reloading and the continuation of the PSA 18 inch upper that has the FN Cold Hammer Forge 556 barrel. And if you guys have been watching this series, you know, I wouldn't say the accuracy has been stellar, but it hasn't been bad. I'd say it's been hovering right around that roughly one minute of angle. And if you've been following this series, you know that the gas block was massively leaking. And if you've been watching some of these uh, live reloading sessions, that gas block was leaking and really bad. You know, all gas blocks will leak to some extent. The PSA custom 0.75 click switch adjustable gas block. Able to get this leaky gas block off. And I got that cleaned up. They do send one of these along with it. So you can put this right down the hand guard and you'll know that we put an adjustable gas block on here from PSA that you can usually get for roughly 50 bucks. A uh, very affordable option if you're looking for an adjustable gas block. And what's nice about this gas block is it has indents on it and also comes with this tool. Uh, so it's easily adjustable. Also, if you watched the last live event, uh, we did some reloads here. Um, and I loaded up five total rounds of 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow points with 23 grains of Varget. Uh, 15 total rounds of fodder ammunition, just some really inexpensive 55 grain boat tail hollow points with a cantaloupe, just enough to get this adjustable gas block adjusted. Uh, and I don't Literally, I'm gonna be just shooting in the ground with that just enough to get this gas block adjusted And then I did the load development here with some 69 grain boat tail hollow points from uh, Sierra Sierra match Kings uh, So enough of the BS talk. Let's get this going. We're gonna get this adjusted and then we're gonna shoot some of this load development and Yeah, let's get this going Now usually what I do first is to make sure that the firearm is completely cleared I'm going to lock this back on the last round bolt hold, inspect the magazine, the chamber, make sure everything is clear. So that looks really good. Make sure this is on safety. And then I usually screw in this adjustable gas block um, all the way. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So I've already tightened this uh, righty tighty all the way home till it can't turn anymore. And then usually what I do is I use the end of this elongated Allen wrench, which comes with this gas block. Um, I use this as a gauge so I can see that this is pointing in this general direction. And I usually start two full turns out from completely closed. So we are gonna screw it lefty loosey. So one full revolution and then another full revolution from completely closed. So two full revolutions. And that's usually my starting point. Uh, and the name of the game here is to get this bolt carrier group to cycle and lock back on the last round bolt hold. And then obviously once that is good, we run about two or three rounds to make sure it just general function is good. It cycles ammunition and then it locks back on that last round bolt hold. Okay, so I got my hearing protection on and the firearm is pointing in a safe direction. Nothing downrange. 
And I am pretty much just going to shoot right into the ground here. So let me get this set up. So we are pointing in the safe direction, shooting it right into the ground. And we were shooting in the sand, so I'm not uh, totally concerned about uh, that. Uh, so I'm going to pull out uh, two total rounds of these full metal jackets. And we're just going to test the general function here and see if it'll even cycle around. So I don't expect this to, but this is a starting point with two full revolutions out. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to keep track of where this brass is ejecting, obviously because I want to reload it, but I'm also going to look at the ejection pattern. And hopefully uh, with this adjustable gas block to get this a function, it's ejecting between 3 and 5 o'clock. So let's take this off safety, pointing into the ground here, safe direction. And all right, so I'm going to put this back on safety. And it didn't cycle. So it did not cycle, didn't strip the round off the magazine. So I'll just pop this out so we can see the round is still in the magazine. So usually what I like to do, and that didn't eject far, ejected right at the bottom of the camera here, uh, almost in the perfect direction too at roughly four or five o'clock. Uh, just checking out that brass, it looks really, really good. Um, so I'm going to put this into the back here, and then I'm going to adjust this gas block out half turn. We're going to keep on adjusting in a half turn until it cycles and functions properly. So uh, firearms clear, lefty loosey. We're going to do a half a turn, and then once we get it to function, I'm going to no go another half a turn past that. So I'm using this as a guide. So lefty loosey, so half a turn. I'm going to load up one more of these full metal jackets. Safe direction, range is clear down range. All right, so they definitely ejected a little bit further and it's in the right uh, direction pattern. So I'm going to put this on safety and it did cycle the next round. So that looks good. And it did feed the next round. So I'm going to load up two here, actually just one. I want to see if this will lock back on the last round bolt hold. It's clear down range. I just got one round in here. I'm just going to see if it will lock back on the last round bolt hold. So a nice ejection perfect location right at five o'clock. And it did not lock back on the last round bolt hold. So firearm is clear. I'm gonna grab that brass. All right, I'm gonna screw this out again, a half a turn, lefty Lucy. That's a half a turn. All right, so I'm gonna load up two total rounds this time and see if it will strip it off and lock back. And I'm pretty sure it will this time, but just don't know until you test it. All right, safe down range. All right, it looks like it's most likely fed the next round. Let's see if it locks back on the last round bolt hold. And it did lock back on the last round bolt hold. So that looks good. And it's ejecting at roughly I would say about 3.30. Uh, so it's still within that three to five range. So that looks pretty darn good. And this was the one right before it, right there. So you can see as I'm increasing the gas, it's ejecting at a different spot and it's ejecting about a good solid eight feet away. So that looks really, really good. Uh, I think I'm gonna go about a quarter turn past that. I don't want to see this brass going past roughly three o'clock. So I think if I go a quarter turn, we should be good with that. I might have to tweak that out depending on what reloads I'm shooting. Uh, but initially I think this will be good to go. So let's do a quarter turn. Everything is clear. We're going to do a quarter turn this time. 
And I think that's going to be good. I'm going to call it a day right there. All right, let me get these other three pieces of brass back here. So within five rounds, I was able to get this adjusted. Now I had to remount this scope because I actually transferred that scope back to my 20 inch varmint bull barrel. So I'm going to quick bore sight this and hopefully within two or three rounds, I can get on paper at 50 and then take it at 100 yards and hopefully do that within two to three rounds. And I'll quick show you how to do that if you're new to the game. All right, so firearm is clear. I'm gonna take the lower off. And I'm gonna lower this front bipod down so I can rest it on this bag. And usually what I like to do is just maybe grab a magazine of some sort on top of this bag. And I'm gonna pull this bolt out. And that's what it's gonna do is just bore sight this. And it's pretty easy once you've done this a few times. You know, method your madness down here. You got three circles that you're playing with. You got the circle at the beginning of your barrel and then you are gonna have another smaller circle at the muzzle and you're gonna center those two together. And then the third circle, which I use usually all the time, three inch circle at 50 yards, you're gonna put that three inch circle in the middle of the other two. So you're gonna have three concentric circles and you're just gonna try your best to bore sight this and I might need a little bit more sandbag. It's kind of like a little more cowbell, but more sandbag. All right, so I got three total circles, one at the chamber, one at the muzzle, and then I have the three inch circle at 50 yards in the middle of those two. I think that should be pretty close enough. Man, are we way off, like not even remotely close. So I need to come to the left considerably. So in order to do that, you're actually gonna adjust right on the windage. Okay, so something like that. Let me go back down here, double check that that's remotely close. So. Then I need to come down. All right, so I think that's gonna be good enough, at least enough to get on paper so we're not wasting ammunition. Uh, so like I said, I used five rounds to adjust, adjust the gas block. Let's take a shot here, and then we'll make another, another adjustment after that. We'll take it down to 100, which should be Good to go, well then roughly two to three rounds. All right, gonna load up two of these crappy full metal jackets. And then we take one shot at 50 yards and see how close we are. <laughs> Man, that is pretty darn good. Let's go down and check it out in the first shot. Hey, not too bad for the first shot here. Just bore sighting that. Not too darn bad. Matter of fact, I don't even think I'm going to adjust it here at 50. We're just going to move this right down to 100. All right, so I believe I still have one round in the chamber here. So I'm going to load up two more of these full metal jackets and we're doing pretty good uh, even after these two I still got six more to go so probably won't even have to use all of these um, but yeah let's take our first shot here at a hundred yards get my bag situated and get my side focus done and you'll notice I bob my head up and down Make sure the side focus is good, that the crosshairs are not moving off the bullseye. I move my head left to right. So yeah, I feel like my parallax is adjusted correctly. And usually what I'll do is I'll purposely go past that quite a bit. And you can actually see those crosshairs just, as I bob my head up and down, the crosshairs grossly come off the bullseye. And I'll go back to that setting that I usually use, which is, I would say roughly 80, 
on my side focus, even though I'm shooting at 100, you never want to truss the numbers on your side focus or parallax. So it looks like that's staying on the target pretty damn good. So yeah, that's exactly where it is, 80. So that's pretty repeatable. All right, let's take our second shot from sighting in at 100 yards. And we're moving from 50 to 100 yards. We'll see how far off this is at 100. All right, so put this back on safety. But I do need to come down. Um, so I'm gonna keep my bullseye, my crosshairs on the bullseye, and I'm gonna adjust down until I re reach the elevation of that first bullet impact. So somewhere's right around there, and then I need to come to the left a little bit. So I'm gonna keep the elevation crosshairs in the middle of that bullseye, and I'm gonna adjust to the left until it reaches that bullet impact. So somewhere's right around there. Let's take another shot and see how that goes. Now remember, like I said, this ammo is not the most accurate long as it's marginally zeroed in. We're good to go on our little de development. So I would say that's good enough. I'm gonna take one more shot here. And that's right on the pasty. So you can see the accuracy of this ammunition is not exactly the best. And this locked back on the last round. And I pur pur purposely didn't put my range bag up here because I want to see where this is ejecting. And it looks pretty darn good. It's right at, I would say the four to five mark. So that is really, really good. And you can see here, I just picked it up right here. And there's the firearm, so roughly eight feet away, right at the four o'clock mark. And that brass looks spectacular. Case mouth openings are round as could be. No cratering of the primer pockets. No ejector swipes. That looks awesome. Okay, so this barrel's bore was completely scrubbed down. I cleaned it right down to bare metal. And there's a reason why I loaded up 15 total rounds of these inexpensive 55 grain full metal jackets for three reasons. Uh, first reason obviously was adjust that adjustable gas box. And then the second reason was to get it marginally on zero. Now keep in mind, these different bullets with different powder drops are gonna impact paper differently. This isn't about bullseyes, this is about group size. We're doing low development. Um, and the, the third reason was to get this freshly clean bore largely fouled out before I do this low development. And every bore is different. Some like to be shot aggressively fouled. Some don't like to be shot fouled at all. And hopefully yours is somewhere in the middle there. And I usually don't clean my rifle bores until, I don't know, until it actually tells me that it needs to be clean. But Usually that's about two to 400 rounds, depending on the bore, and they're all different. Uh, rifle bores are like fingerprints. And humans, they're, everyone's different. And just like your rifle bore, you just gotta just keep an eye on that accuracy and see uh, how it likes to be shot. But, all right, so enough of the BS. Uh, I'm gonna start right out of the gate here with the 69 grain SMKs. And I'm gonna do the three rounds at 24.0, and then I'm gonna move on to 24.3 and increments of three up to 25.5. So let's get this loaded up and get this going on this low development. Now I got my range bag up here so I can catch my brass. I'm not hunting it down. All right, so you can see this bullet with that particular powder drop is way off zero from the 55 grain. So I'm not gonna adjust on this, I'm gonna continue this group until I'm done, and then I'm gonna make an adjustment so I'm not, um, you know, running into the other groups. Um, but I'm just gonna finish this group. And damn, does that look like 
an awesome three round group or probably about a half minute of angle I'm guessing <laughs> that looks really good now I'm going to adjust this and I don't want to get this actually on bullseye I want to keep it off the bullseye I want to you know keep my point of impact um, or my point of aim I should say uh, clear and I'm probably going to adjust this up just a little bit not much so I'm going to adjust this up just a little bit and then I am going to adjust to the left pretty much right underneath the bullseye so right about there should be good yeah let's keep on going let's load up the 24.3 all right so that group definitely opened up without a doubt it's definitely not like that first group holy smoke that first group just like my friend James Phillips said, uh, his sweet spot is at 24.0. Um, yeah, that's that's got me somewhat curious there. And obviously, some of this could very well be me, but you just don't know until you get those rounds down the tube. All right, so moving on to 24.6. All right, so it's somewhat hard to make out my group there because it's in that number, 24.6. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm purposely going to adjust this down so I can get my group out of that those numbers so I can make it out. All right, so on to the 24.9. So... Yeah, it's right around a little over an inch, I'm going to guess, on that one. At least I can make out the group. So I think it's not mixed in with those numbers. I can clearly make out the group. So I'm actually going to adjust uh, this up just a little bit. Now, as, as these powders increase, uh, the point of impact's obviously changing, too. All right, so I'm going to 25.2. Wow. That, did that ever open up? Wow, that just makes no sense whatsoever. Huh. That is really interesting. It's like you got one directly underneath it and two way off the left. What the heck? All right, so moving on to the 25.5, and we're going increments of three here for powder drops. And man, talk about the difference from that 24.0. Like my friend James Phillips said, his sweet spot's at 24.0, and talk about a difference. I mean, just night and day. Unbelievable. I'm going to adjust this down just a little bit, so I'm not... Mix it in with that 24.9. And let's finish this off, so. All right, so I'm gonna grab, bolt lock back so it looks good. I'm gonna grab one of these really, really high end 25.9s if I can find it here. So here's 25.5. It looks like I'm getting some cratering on this. And let me show that to you here. So I am getting some cratering on this. Let me get this into the sun. So I don't know if you guys can make this out, but it's not excessive, but it's definitely, it has some cratering to it. You can kind of make out that cratering a little bit. I'll try my best to focus in on this. So it is showing a little bit of pressure signs on that. Uh, the sides look pretty darn good. And the case mouth opening is round as could be, but, but like I said, we're definitely showing some signs of overpressuring here. And man, does that 24.0 ever look amazing in regards to a group size? And that's exactly what my good old friend James Phillips says he uses 
uh, for his 69 SMKs. All right, let me get this paused here. And wow, talk about some differences in group size between these powder drops. I mean, that is just insane. Uh, right out of the gate, it's 24.0. And like I said, my good friend and my, I consider my mentor, he uses with 69 grain SMKs 24.0. And he says he gets insane results. And I would say that is probably a three eighths group all day long. And that looks pretty impressive. You know, went up 0.3 here. And, you know, we got a little bit of a flyer here. So I would say that's, oh, I'd say about an inch and a quarter. And back to 24.6. Man, we're talking half minute of angle there. 24.9. I would say that's right about a minute of angle, right at one inch. I have no clue what the heck is going on here. Uh, that makes absolutely no sense why these are so far apart. I mean, we are talking damn near, oh, I don't know, inch and a half. And this one's roughly a little over an inch. I would say, yeah, it's right about a, uh, one minute of uh, accuracy there. But holy smokes, talk about this 24.0. So let's move on to the 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow points. And like in the previous video to this, I did no low development for this. So I've only shot 23.0. I'm just kind of doing this to see how it compares to the previous video. And then I have enough left to do another five shot group here with a full metal jacket. All right, moving on to the 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow points. Like I said, I've done no load development for this at all. So I'm curious to see how this prints. Wow. Not, not too darn bad, man. Uh, that is not bad at all. I mean, if that one was just an ever so if that last shot would have been more into that group, that would have been pretty spectacular. Um, but holy smokes, that's not bad either, especially for an inexpensive Hornady uh, heavier bullet. I might uh, might have to revisit those too. I think I'm gonna have to do some specific load development for that 75 grain, holy mackerel. But uh, yeah, let's uh, load up these spotter rounds, the 55 grain. Full metal jackets, I got six left, so I'm actually gonna do a six shot group here. No, it's not too bad for a really cheap, you know, bullet 55 grain. Uh, it does have a boat tail, but it does have a can lure. I would say that's hovering right about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half. All right, so the head is pretty damn impressive. And I'm kind of pumped about this because these bullets are really, really cheap and I can get them locally. And I would say that's right about three quarters minute of angle, you know, without that last one for four total shots. I mean, that is really impressive. That's about a half minute of accuracy. You know, I don't know if I can consider this a flyer, uh, but we're talking about, th about three quarter minutes of accuracy with a really heavy bullet and I'm kind of pumped about this and we had really good luck with this bullet on that last episode. And man, that looks really good. And even with the 55 grain inexpensive bullets, we're roughly about, you know, this is one inch circle. So I'd say this is about an inch and a quarter. So that's looking pretty damn good. And I might revisit this the 69 grain SMKs, and I'm gonna load up some of these with 24.0 grains of Varget. Uh, but I think I'm really on to something here with these 75 grain boat tail hollow points. And I'm excited about this, and the reason why is they're so darn heavy, and I can shoot further distances because of that. And that is looking really good. So I think I need to do some dedicated load development with the 75 grain boat tail hollow points for sure, and get some of these loaded up. Well, of course, I'm missing one piece of brass. <laughs> it's got to be around here somewhere. And I found it. And I know it's mine because it's 05 Lake City. 
and it's got a silver CCI primer cup. All right, so I am back home and took a shower, made sure I got all the damn ticks off of me. Can't stand ticks, especially with that Lyme disease. Uh, it seems like every time I go out there, I'm picking a tick off or two. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you know, the 69 grain SMKs, obviously the 24.0 shows an insane amount of promise here at 0.424 minutes of angle. Um, even the 24.6 is right on its heels there. Uh, so I obviously with the other feedback I'm getting from James Phillips, like I said in that live event, he's kind of a mentor of mine. That's exactly what he uses is 24.0 grains of the 69 grain SMK. As a matter of fact, hitting steel CA in that very same live event, the, the last live event we did, dropping powder and seeding bullets, um, he uses 24.1. So I'm not sure if they're using a one and seven twist like this particular PSA 18 inch Colt Hammer Forge F and barrel has. Uh, but man, does that ever show some promise? And obviously if Hit and Steel CA is showing those results on the low end of the velocity spectrum, James Phillips is the same way. And I've read a few things in the Sniper's Hide Depot Center there in the forums. Seems like these 69 grain SMKs don't like to be shot ultra fast and that you can kind of see that here. Um, you know, they're starting to open up here a little bit and we started to see some cratering on those primers at 25.5. So I think what I'm going to have to do here is follow on, fall into the footsteps of James Phillips and Hit and Steel CA and load up some more of these 24.0 grains of Varget with the 69 SMKs. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I already have this prime like you guys seen in the last live event. So these are ready to rock and roll. Just got to drop powder with the FX120i and see some bullets with the co coax press. Uh, but this is really awesome. And also with the 75 grain boat tail hollow points from Hornady, another insane awesome group here, you know, I wouldn't even call this a flyer. We're at 0.773 for a five shot group with 23 grains of Varget. You know, if I was to eliminate this one here, I mean, this is easily under a half minute of angle. Um, so, what I really, really like about that aspect is I can get these 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow points for ultra dirt cheap and locally to boot. So that's why I'm really, really excited about this. I haven't done low development with this number. I just picked a number out of the data book. So I think what I need to do is load up an array of powder drops starting from the low end to the highest high end of the velocity spectrum in 0.3 grains of Varget. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to load some more of the 69 grain SMKs, load up some more and then a full uh, low development gamut in the 75 grains. You know, and even the 55 grain full metal jackets, you know, for a really inexpensive bullet uh, hovering right above sub MOA, you know, 1.2. That's, you know, if you just want to do some plinking with a really inexpensive bullet, you know, like this, like I said, the more I shoot this chrome-lined FN barrel out of this PSA 18-inch cold hammer forge upper, the, the more accurate it gets. And I've seen that before. I've seen that before in the past, especially in my LMT modern weapon system at 762 by 51 that had a chrome line. It shot horrendous out of the box. And I almost gave up on that thing. And I, I, kept, I kept the push going. And as that chrome lining broke in, and I did no hand lapping with that, it easily became a sub MOA shooter down in the 0.7s for a full six by five target, six total uh, groups, five shots each, 30 rounds shot in a row. And I still kicking myself in the head today for selling the damn rifle because it was so darn accurate. And I got a gut feeling that's exactly the same route I'm going down, you know, the very same road I'm going down with this particular chrome line barrel too. So the more I shoot it, the more accurate it becomes. And I'm excited to get some more rounds loaded up and get those pills down this tube and get it on video for you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy this series so far. I know I have, and I'm learning, and I hope you guys are learning with me. And if you enjoy my content, you enjoy this video, 
scratch my back and I'll continue to scratch your back with this amazing content by not only like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. And when you do hit that notification bell, make sure you hit notify all so you get all those notifications. Become a Patreon. It helps out more than you know. And I will see you guys in the next live stream of dropping more powder and seeding bullets for the 69 SMKs with 24 grains of Varget and a wide array, low development spectrum for the Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow points, which I'm really excited about. Really cheap bullet and they're really heavy. That means they're just gonna go further distances. I will see you guys in the next live stream.